Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam explains package managers, software centers, and PPAs. Oh my! Okay, let's jump right into this. Now, in other episodes, I've shown you where to get software, but I've never really explained how it works, or at least until now. So I'm actually going to do this in the XFCE desktop environment, just because it's much quicker for me in VirtualBox. But uh, this will work identical in the Unity desktop environment. Uh, the only thing you're going to need to know how to get to is the Software Center, which you should know how to do, and the Terminal, which you should also know how to get to in the Unity desktop environment. So it doesn't matter which desktop environment you're using, all will be uh, identical. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the Ubuntu Software Center. So in XFCE, if you go to Settings, you can go to the Ubuntu Software Center. And if you're on the Unity Desktop, just hit the Windows key and then just type in Software Center. Now, most of the time when uh, you start the Ubuntu Software Center and you click on something, for example, VLC Media Player, just because this is the first thing I see, I see uh, it actually pulls in a lot of packages behind the scenes. Now remember, I've said this many times, Linux is highly modular, so people use libraries and other projects to link to their software. So, uh, for example, VLC may use codecs and libraries built by other people, uh, and then this software just kind of piggybacks and uses the advantages of other people developing other parts of the software. Now everything being uh, pulled in the background is actually called dependencies. Uh, in the past, it would be that you would have to hunt down everything. So if you wanted VLC, maybe uh, a special library for uh, MPEG codecs was also needed. And in the past, what you have to do is you have to install VLC. And then you would actually have to install the, the MPEG library as well. And you would have to hunt down everything, and it would just became a real pain in the butt. So Linux, in order to solve that, or at least for Ubuntu and Debian-based uh, stuff, uh, developed a program called apt-get. Now, the most confusing thing to new users, and honestly to me still, is that other distributions use different package managers. So, uh, for example, um, Debian uses apt-get for the most part, which is a .deb uh, file, which basically has all dependencies and all that wrapped into to everything. Uh, and then, for example, Fedora and OpenSUSE, they use uh, .rpm files, and it's just a different way of, of uh, same concept, it's just the it, it, I guess it's a fork with, with how packages are handled. Arch Linux uses uh, Pac-Man, I believe, or something to that effect. And again, that has a whole host of advantages and disadvantages uh, when comparing the different package managers. So unfortunately, that's a confusing part with Linux is that you have different package managers. As I've already alluded to, the underlying program in Ubuntu or Debian-based distributions is a program called apt-get. Now this is the back-end, or you can think of this as behind the scenes. This is all stuff that is done in the terminal uh, and that you have no idea even exists. The front-end, or what you see, uh, in this case it's graphical user interface, is the Ubuntu Software Center in Ubuntu. Uh, other distributions will use apt-get as the backend, but maybe they'll use another program like Synaptic. Now, uh, we can certainly install Synaptic on Ubuntu, and I'll actually show you how to do that. And each packaging software has pros and cons. To me, the Ubuntu software is great visually. It gives nice reviews, but it's a little bit slow to start up and a little bit pokey. Uh, Synaptic, maybe not quite as nice visually, but it's a little bit faster. Uh, or if you wanted to, hardcore, I'll show you how to do this, uh, we'll use the command line. So at this point, I'm going to install Synaptic through the command line. Now you're saying, Adam, why in the world would you install something through the command line? Well, if I already know the name of the program, it is super, super quick to install via the command line versus the Ubuntu Software Center. Uh, I have to launch the Ubuntu Software Center, I have to search for the program, then I have to find it, and I have to click install. And the command line is super, super fast. Also, it's a good idea to be familiar with the command line for some of this stuff because, uh, to my knowledge, this is the best and easiest way to install PPAs. Uh, more on PPAs later. So now we're going to do this via the the terminal. Now you do not have to do this. You can just sit and watch and see how this is done. It's up to you. Um, but uh, if you're in XFCE, you're going to go to the terminal emu emulator. If you have the default configuration set up for your panels, you can also click this icon down here. 
Now this is a slight issue uh, uh, because it's using the theme. Uh, you can see I have nothing here. Uh, if you experience this, no big deal, don't freak out. Go up to Edit, Profile, Preferences, and what we're going to do is you're going to go to Colors and just uncheck Use Colors from System Themes. And then now you can see everything comes up. Uh, this is also where, uh, just for your future reference, you can change the text color, you can make it black on white, uh, whatever you want to set up. So I'll explain these commands later uh, in the video, but sudo basically means a, a super user do. Basically, you are giving authentication to allow a program to install. And then we're going to type apt get install and then just the name of the program so in this case uh, it is going to be synaptic and then we are going to click enter it's going to ask for your password and then this just basically tells you uh, everything that will be also pulled in so this is what I was talking about with the dependencies this happens behind the scene in the Ubuntu Software Center um, this docbox dash XML uh, uh, all of these are getting uh, installed in the background so these packages are needed in order for this to work so I'm going to click continue yes and it's going to install everything for us so that's a perfect example if you know the exact name of the program you are looking to install uh, doing it via the command line is a piece of cake okay now that we're done you should be able to go up to applications menu uh, I'm not sure exactly where this is going to place it oh it placed it right here in synaptic package manager now if you're in unity 12.04 just type in synaptic package manager uh, it'll immediately ask for your password that's fine because this is administrative privileges and this is synaptic you can see it loaded much quicker than the ubuntu software center uh, as a side note um, uh, from my understanding ubuntu uh, or any uh, distribution is set up to only run one package manager at a time so for example you do not want to open up the ubuntu software center um, it's a good idea and good practice to only work with one package manager at a time so um, uh, you know i think it locks the file let's actually test that out real quick just to see uh, if i can in fact run two at the same time i think if i were installing uh, a piece of software already it wouldn't let me install from synaptic package manager um just run one package manager so this is synaptic this is where you would search uh kde for example this is um uh, kde is uh, another desktop environment um, but then, uh, you know, right here would be the KDE standard. Uh, some people find this a little bit uh, harder to use than the Ubuntu Software Center, especially for new users. Um, but then, like, for example, if I say mark for installation, what's nice about this is it'll tell you everything else is required for this to work. So this is, again, another way you could see all the dependencies. So you can see KDE is a huge package, um, and it's going to bring in a lot of stuff. Now, I'm not going to install this. I'm just going to cancel, but I'm just showing you uh, how Synaptic works. Okay, at this point, I'm going to jump back to the terminal here just to show you um, how to use app get a little bit more and what everything means. Uh, Honestly, installing software from the Ubuntu Software Center, piece of cake. Synaptic, a little bit more challenging, um, but it's also a good idea to know how to do it from the command line because, as I've said, once you start learning what these program names are uh, and you want to install something, it's super, super quick. So let's open up the manual for apt-get. Um, again, man basically will tell you all the information about the apt-get program. And again, apt-get is behind the scenes and it can only be run via the terminal. So this basically tells you all the information about apt-get. Remember, we did sudo, which basically gives uh, administrative access to this program. And then we did apt-get. And then after you do apt-get, you have to say something else. So uh, apt-get can do an update, it can do an upgrade, um, it can do a dist upgrade or it can do an install. Now install is what we use because that is what we wanted to do. We wanted to say sudo apt-get install and then a program that we were looking for, in this case synaptic. Now if you have um, uh, an update, uh, you know, Ubuntu will say, oh, uh, 27 packages or whatever need to be uh, updated. You could also do that from the command line, and that is using uh, sudo apt-get upgrade. And upgrade is used to install the newest version of all packages. So basically, uh, there's a database file or cache file or whatever uh, that basically says, oh, uh, all of these new updates were added in the repository. You need to add these new updates to your system. So sudo apt get remove is identical to the install except that the packages are removed instead of installed. So if you wanted to remove a package uh, using the command line, you would do sudo apt get remove. If you wanted to delete all the configuration files, you would do sudo apt get 
purge. And so this is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more final. Is that if you've spent lots of time uh, doing a lot of configuration files that are that are behind the scenes, you may not want to do purge. And you can see there's a whole host of other things. I'm not going to go through them. You can just read the manual um, and figure out uh, what you uh, what more more in depth of what these do. I will tell you of one more though that's kind of important uh, sudo apt get update. Um, this basically resynchronizes the the source file. So uh, I don't know if it's a database or, or just a text file but basically um, uh, there's this file on on your system that uh, will uh, keep a log of all the packages available to you. And this is important when you start adding uh, PPAs and other places to look for software, um, this database needs to be uh, updated. I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail later when we talk about PPAs. So let's talk about security uh, pretty quick here. Uh, again, I'm not a security expert. I have just very limited knowledge on this, so this is layman's terms. So I apologize in advance. But basically the way this works is there's a whole bunch of repositories with software. And the way this works is this is kind of vetted through the community. And um, to make sure that no one uploads anything malicious, um, each software package has a special key associated with it. So it, it kind of verifies that no one uh, replaces the software that's not intended. So the idea is that this is pretty secure. Uh, and that there's very, very little risk as far as getting uh, malicious software through um, uh, uh, the official Ubuntu repositories. Now, PPA stands for Personal Package Archive. And these are programs that haven't made it to the repositories yet. For example, GIMP, which is a picture manipulator, uh, uh, originally was on version 2.6. Well, they released version 2.8. Uh, which had a whole bunch of awesome features, but it, it, it hasn't made it to the Ubuntu repositories yet because uh, the Ubuntu uh, uh, community has to vet everything and it could take maybe a month or two and depending on what version it is, um, uh, it may not be released for Ubuntu 12.04 because when everything was frozen, maybe that was uh, the GIMP 2.6 was a stable, stable version. In any event, if you want to install the GIMP 2.8 then you could do this via a PPA. Now there's tons of other software that you can install via a PPA. Uh, think of this as kind of like a home brew. The disadvantage to a PPA is that it's more risky. Uh, now I've never had an issue and from my understanding the community is pretty good about uh, uh, you know someone updated a malicious PPA um, that that hopefully that that would be caught um, uh, especially if it was linked on the website hopefully people would be like no do not download this now again I haven't had an issue but uh, there is inherent risk whenever you're dealing with a PPA so do your homework look into the PPA and make sure that you totally trust it because once you give administrative access to any program there is always a risk and PPAs are a little bit more risky than anything in the Ubuntu software center so if your goal is super security, uh, then I would recommend not installing a PPA. Okay, so the PPA I'm about to install, again, you don't have to install it, you can just watch. Uh, then later on, uh, if you feel that you can trust this PPA, uh, I personally do, uh, then go ahead and install it. Now this is geared for Ubuntu 12.04, so that's why I'm in Ubuntu 12.04, because that's what this PPA uh, or this, uh, this piece of software is geared for. Basically, uh, it's an indicator, uh, multi-load indicator, that allows me to watch CPU, memory, and a whole bunch of other information. So uh, I'm going to do this in Ubuntu 12.04. Uh, we need to do this via terminal, because this is the easiest and best way to do this. So what we need to do, the first step is sudo, because again, we need to give um, uh, uh, administrative access to this. Uh, we're gonna, so we're going to do sudo. And then the first thing we need to do is we need to add dash apt repository. Now basically what this part of the command is saying is that we are looking at different, uh, we are going to add a different repository. We're going to add a different place where we can look for software. Um, the default uh, in the uh, is basically anything in the Ubuntu repositories. And then we are going to say PPA uh, uh, 
uh, colon indicator dash multi load backslash stable dash daily. Uh, if you want, just paste that in. Uh, I certainly did. And whenever you're on a website uh, that talks about a PPA, uh, it'll tell you what repository you need to add. So I find the easiest thing to do is select it and then just paste it in your terminal. So once we click enter, we are going to add this repository and it's also going to pull in a uh, a key and it'll also say uh, press enter to continue just to make sure that you really want to do this and you can see the key ring uh, was created so uh, anytime there's an update um, and if the key ring doesn't match then um, you will get uh, an error and honestly if that happens uh, that means that's bad um, and I would probably get rid of that PPA. It just means that that someone uh, uploaded that uh, a new version of the software without uh, the correct key ring. So the next thing is, so we've added the repository, but our, our database doesn't know that this repository uh, has been added yet. So what we need to do is we need to sudo, again, we need to give administrative privileges to this, apt get, uh, and remember I said um, update and I talked about this uh, earlier in the video and basically this will update the cache or the database or whatever this file is and it will allow us to look in uh, this new spot um, uh, which is this new repository for software so we are actually oops update helps if I spell it right and uh, now you can see it's going to go through its commands and these are basically all the repositories most of them are uh, through ubuntu.com um, and then now we just uh, added this other PPA you can see right here so that's excellent so now all we need to do is you just install this like a regular uh, program now if you went to the Ubuntu software it would actually show up I'll show you that real quick the name of the program is called uh, indicator dash multi load is the correct name for it uh, and you can see system load indicator uh, so it showed up right there now I'm not going to install this to the Ubuntu software center uh, we're going to do the whole thing through the command line because this is basically what people will tell you when installing a PPA so remember we need administrative privileges sudo so apt get and then uh, we're going to use the install part of apt get and then it's just indicator and again you can hit tab because now that um, uh, uh, the terminal knows where to, to look for this uh, in that that file then um, that software at least exists as far as knowing what the name of it is so now we can hit enter and that's it it's installed now it looks like nothing happened what we actually have to do is we actually have to start the program so if you go up here and you type in system or indicator system load indicator you can click this and it will immediately start now the default is just the uh, the CPU you can right click uh, and then you can say preferences and then here you can say to auto start is automatically checked so now this will start whenever your uh, program starts you can say um, how long you want the update interval to be uh, the longer it is uh, the less resources this program will take but uh, it won't give you a clear picture of what your CPU is doing so you, you can adjust this um, I think mine set to 750 I found that was an acceptable balance if you want you can turn on memory network swap space load hard disk whatever you can or you can turn off whatever you want uh, here you can set the colors to each thing um, so this is a neat little piece of software that gives you quick visual of of what's going on in your system. All right, as always, hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully this uh, explains uh, how uh, packaging and software works in Ubuntu um, or Debian type distributions. Uh, as always, be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Thanks for watching.